All right, welcome everybody to Round the Fire podcast with Kingsview Safaris. Uh, this is actually quite a quite a cool and special one because it is actually around the fire. So I'm really chuffed about that and in a beautiful setting. Amazing, yeah. Um, my guest today is Mac Dubber from Air Arms Hunting SA, and I'm super excited to have him out. We've already had a bit of a cool morning. It's been uh, great, yeah. Yeah, we shot two nice impala this morning. A bit of a, a meat project for a school that we support. So I want to do. Get Matt out to come and chat about yeah. air rifles, things like that. And um, he's definitely he's got an incredible YouTube channel, which I enjoy watching uh, with my kids. So, and I find out that he lives quite quite close to me. I thought, yeah, that's cool. Get him out here and do it. So, how are you doing, Matt? Thanks for coming out, man. Doing very well. Um, doing better now that we got a nice hunt done and <laughs> yeah. have great weather. It's a bit hot today, but uh, just being out here by the river, being able to dip my feet in and sitting in the shade at the fire. My day just got a whole lot better and yeah. it's, I appreciate coming out here, so thanks. And it's a scorcher of a day. It is, it's ridiculous. It's been a few months of winter, like chilly, chilly days yeah. and then all of a sudden this is probably the first hot, hot day we've had since winter. Hey? It's crazy and it, it wasn't like it was building up to it, it just, it just, just happened. It just hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not complaining too much, definitely us South Africans are, are fans of the sun. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that we like most about winter is hunting season. Mm. So uh, to get some nice sun now is, is definitely good. and. A nice cold Guinness in hand, which is awesome. Yeah. Thanks very much for bringing these to me. No that was problem. a nice little touch. Um, why don't you, obviously I think this might be up on your YouTube channel, which a lot yeah. of your, your fans are going to see. So they'll know a little bit about you. But for the sake of the podcast, why don't you give the guys a bit of a background and just tell them, you know, what you're into, what you enjoy about air arms, rifles, things mm. like that, and, and take it from there. So, so my story is pretty interesting. Um, I was in high school, probably grade 10, grade 11, just not digging school <laughs> like supposed to be studying for my exams and ended up on youtube and i found a video of, of guys hunting rabbits with air guns in the uk okay. and I, you know when you think of air guns you think of the spring like the yeah, springer like that pellet you know, guns your, yeah and and I, I was amazed like oh my word you can actually hunt a rabbit with an air gun like that's crazy mm -hmm. um and and started looking more into it and and really getting into it and uh ended up starting to save up for my own air rifle and uh, the guns that I was seeing on YouTube were called pre-charged pneumatic air guns, which okay. essentially you fill them from a scuba tank with yeah. compressed air. Yeah. And it allows you to not only uh, get much higher, get much more power out of your guns, but just much better accuracy. Okay. No recoil from that heavy spring inside and just uh, more accuracy, um, a repeating rifle with a magazine so you can take a quick follow-up okay, shot. Okay, that's pretty cool. Things like yeah. that. And I looked at these videos I was seeing on YouTube and I thought, hey, I'm sure I can do that. I'd done a bit of video editing. I thought, you know, I, <laughs> I can do that. Probably like, I'm sure at some point with your podcast, you, you listen to podcasts, you're like, hey, you know, I can do my own podcast. Yeah. Why don't I give it a try? Yeah, you know? I can talk crap for about an hour, yeah. hour and a half. So, <laughs> so that's, I, I ended up starting my channel while I was in high school. And by the time I matriculated from school, my channel was big enough where I'm like, well, actually, I am going to just take a gap year and just focus on learning some editing skills. I cool. worked with a, a YouTube channel that makes spear fishing videos yeah. and ended up learning some editing skills there and how to manage a YouTube channel and my channel just grew over the years to the point where it's now, as far as I know, it's the biggest hunting related YouTube channel in Africa. That's awesome. So man. that's not just air guns, that's like hunting in general. That's incredible. And that's, yeah, just, it's just purely through passion of enjoying what i do and just putting effort into it because i enjoy it yeah and it growing naturally and now i'm in the position where uh, i get to travel all over the world every year I, i'm working on big projects projects in the gun industry not just air gun industry um working with um scopes like the scopes the scope i used to do on my rifle okay. yeah well, listen, some of those shots we were thumping today, I think it was working It was working spot on. It was, yeah, it was that, great. That was pretty cool. But yeah. it, it just shows also, I think, the um, one of the things that, how do I say, attracted me to you or found out about you was your Oxwagon Diaries. Yes. And um, I always enjoy watching that with my kids. I've got two small little kids. They, I wouldn't say we, we push them into hunting, but they mm. obviously know that hunting is our business and it's part of the family and the way we are. And you're watching YouTube videos and the kids tend to walk past and see one and um, they always just said they want to, they want to watch that hunter with the long hair. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that was, that was you. But the Oxwagon um, diary yeah. was, was so good and very well done, and, and it was nice so to do it. What, what what I think makes that series so popular, aside from the fact that we, that we're shooting a lot of monkeys, which is so like bizarre to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. like viral content. But 
um, is that it's so um, authentic in the sense that a lot of hunting related videos are so choreographed and yeah. like dramatized shall we say and um, and it's not necessarily an authentic look of what like classic hunting is in the sense that you know in South Africa we grow up from a young age yeah. and our fathers take us hunting when we're young and we get up we shoot our first buck and we get the blood on our face and all of that yeah. and, and um, it looks very different to what you see in a, a let's say a hunting film mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. obviously hunting in different countries is different and what you see on some films maybe how authentic hunting happens in other countries but I think for a lot of South Africans and locals seeing stuff like the Oxwagon Diaries where yeah. it's like really down to I mean I'm hunting in flip flops yeah. and you sleeping on the floor and it's something like, we can all relate to that, you can that's relate what to I enjoyed and I was like I've been in that situation before yeah. and I know exactly how it feels and, and that type of stuff yeah and I, I think especially with um, like inexperienced hunters or younger kids the whole air rifle side of it gets a lot of people into hunting and I guess yeah. we can chat about that as well because um, there's a lot of guys who will uh, start off with air guns as their first first gun and then transition into something else definitely definitely and I, I do want to jump into it because mm. I myself don't know too much about it so I'm keen yeah. to learn a lot more but one of the things that I just quickly want to jump back on that I enjoyed your videos is obviously a lot of the animals that you go after is considered vermin the vervet monkeys yeah. the Egyptian gooses um, dusties things like that which are never really considered high game up there that everybody mm. loves it's not a kudu or a sable or anything like that but yet the amount of hunting you actually get to do the amount of yeah. shots you get to take um, and low impact I mean you yeah. some of the things you went to on, on dairy farms and and places like that you're not letting off these huge shots that are yeah. scaring animals it's very quiet and I think that is good for a lot of guys to get into hunting to do that too um, so so the beauty of air rifle hunting for me is and you know I, I do a variety I do, all, I do bow, a bit of bow hunting I do hunting with centerfire rifles I do mm -hmm. farm hunting with small fast centerfire rifles a bit of rimfire shooting and air gun shooting obviously but what I love about air rifle shooting is just the sheer volume of, of shots you you don't go out and you take your that one shot yeah. you 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 get a lot of trigger time and that's not only good for uh, for training yourself as a shooter mm -hmm. but it's it also uh, it's also the, the repercussions of let's say you go out and you you do a trophy hunt and you don't you, you don't get the animal you're looking for or or you you take a shot and you end up wounding an animal and you there's that pressure to make it count whereas with air gun shooting it's it's a little more like a little bit of the stress is taken away yeah um, and of course with that a little bit of the adrenaline is taken away which is a negative but you get that trigger time and you get to um yeah you you really get to to go out and, and get a lot of action and, spend a bit and time outside. because it's mostly problem pest animals you know that you're also actually benefiting yeah um, you know I'm big into into like the management side of mm -hmm. hunting and the success stories that come from even trophy hunting is still management hunting yeah. because the, the income from that goes towards the number of animals will grow yeah and like you look at the, like a black wildebeest and how their numbers have grown since they legalized it's true like there's so many hunting success stories mm -hmm. and with an air gun you've all these animals that people aren't able or not interested in shooting that are actually a problem and need to be shot like yeah. look at a dairy farm an egyptian geese or or monkeys that can on do a, sheep a lot farm. of damage and and you can go out and you can make a positive difference and really enjoy it for yeah. minimal cost yeah so there's no negatives <laughs> definitely <laughs> and a lot of great. times with those smaller vermin sadly the option is poison which is never yeah, good exactly. no one ever wants to get into that sort of stuff so this just yeah. adds another or traps and then you have to shoot them anyway once exactly. you get to the trap Exactly, so, and um, it's as you were touching on earlier. Kids growing up in South Africa, that's that's how we we learn to hunt. We used to yeah. go after those things and and build up from there. The nice thing from my side is that being a, a having a trophy hunting business, you know, I don't yeah. have to worry about a fifty inch dusty or a whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no trophy measurement yeah. on a lot of these things, so you can actually go out and take the ones that you you see and enjoy. Yeah. So I really enjoyed those sort of videos. One more thing to add is that air gun hunting is very accessible to a lot of people. And I found an interesting um, statistic when I upload a, a, a trophy hunt video, mm -hmm. it only gets a tiny fraction of the of the interest as a like pest, like shooting pigeons, and mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense. Okay. But the, I think the reason for that is uh, like you you'll find your you know like thirteen year old farm farm boy from 
the Midwest in the US who's grown up shooting pigeons in a barn. Yeah. Or you'll find, um, you know, a guy in Indonesia who mm-hmm. they, they make all these crazy like homemade air guns and, and they go out and shoot pigeons for food. Yeah. And those guys, that's what they're searching because that's their world. They can relate and they to they don't that. necessarily, like yeah. in South Africa, we spoiled in that we get a lot of game hunting mm-hmm. opportunities, but a lot of people don't. And yeah. so that's uh, that stepping stone into hunting where you're shooting a pigeon, which is so accessible to everyone, um, that is the, the baseline of what hunting is. And from there, you get you everything up. else. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I actually like that. And that's a really good point that you hit on, is getting started with that. So what would you say to, to a young guy watching this, probably about 12, 13, you know, 14 years, how does he start getting into it? I mean, obviously they probably yeah. wouldn't go out and start buying the scopes and the GoPros and the recordings and whatever, but is there, there should be good entry level air guns for them to get? Yeah, so, um, I mean, if you're really starting at the bottom, um, a, a PCP or pre-charged pneumatic is, it can be quite pricey. Mm-hmm. Um, they're getting cheaper and cheaper as you know, economies of scale, as more people get into it, there's yeah. like cheaper models available. But you can really do a lot with a, a cheap s- spring gun. Yeah, yeah. And um, like, that's where I started, that's where most people start. And if you get close enough to a pigeon, you can take it down easily with a spring gun. Mm-hmm. So that's where I would recommend people start um you know if, if you're in the in the u.s and you can easily buy a rim fire over the counter that's also a great <laughs> yeah. option but um yeah and then you know if you're really getting into into air guns you can buy that first um pre-charged pneumatic air gun in 177 22 25 caliber okay. which are now really easily available everywhere and that just that's that next step up where you can really start shooting animals 50 meters to 100 meters okay um, small game accurately yeah that's and it's, it's still relatively affordable. I mean, as a kid, you obviously, you probably need your parents' help, but it's at, it's still within that affordable price range where, you know, you could you could look at it as a Christmas present or something. And as a parent, that is a great way to get your kids into hunting because mm-hmm. you don't really want them going out shooting their first buck having never pulled the trigger before. You want them to get a bit of practice on something, you know, yeah. like feeling that, feeling that trigger, getting your cheek weld right, all of that. Um, and so when the, when the opportunity comes to shoot their first animal, yeah, the, the they know that they can do it com- with confidence. That's actually a so, great point. So you you'd say that an air gun would help you develop good skills for shooting yeah. a rifle, looking through and the scope, holding it tight, without getting that that flinch of a loud. Exactly. You, you, know, you get recoil. used to you get used to the quiet. You get used to the the skill of having to take a shot without the stress of getting knocked in the shoulder or knocked in the eye with a mm-hmm. scope. And uh, we even seen now, like for example, in Cape Town, um, Patriot Outdoors Air Gun Shop has a, a, a 40 meter indoor range where like there's a lot of people booking kids birthday parties and the kids come, oh, nice. they hire out air guns yeah. and they shoot a course where you've got like small game, dussies, Egyptian geese, everything, monkeys with like the correct um, kill zones and yeah. the kids learn how to, they learn about shot placement, they learn about how to hold the rifle, everything. Yeah. And those kids get hooked and then you know it's okay when when am i gonna yeah. get to hunt my first yeah. springbuck or something that's brilliant so that's actually the foundation for where ethical hunting comes from because now exactly. all of a sudden this kid's growing up where he gets to the point where he can shoot springbuck kudu bushbuck whatever it is and, and he's a competent hunter he's good with yeah. the rifle and he's you've been learned, trained you've on learned that shot you know, placements the head or the vital zone you, you gain points with that and you lose points if you hit it anywhere else it's a bad thing it's better to miss yeah. than to shoot the back legs of an yeah. animal and that's really really important as well that's actually so, brilliant I, I think for most kids it's the way to start um, yeah and as a kid you, you absorb information much quicker so yeah. starting them early is a, help, is a good thing to do so. well listen I don't know um, my little boy's just got a slingshot and he keeps shooting me in the butt with just about every rock or stone he can find. So I think I might hold off on him getting the gun just for now. But uh, it is, it's brilliant. I love the fact that it, it gives, I don't know if there's a there's a craze that's been going by where guys are trying to get their, their children to shoot these animals as young as possible. And you know, it's, I can understand that trying to get out and you're excited as a dad to get your kid out, but there has to be a, a way to bring them up yeah. to it. And I think And the thing to remember also is, is uh, as a kid, if, if you if your first shot in an animal results in wounding it, you can actually be traumatized from that, yeah, and you okay. can be put off hunting. I've spoke, I've spoken to people who've gone through that, mm-hmm. and they it, it, it's a it uh, it sticks with them, and that image of a of an animal suffering sticks with them. Yep. And actually doing it right from the start, and 
you know even if even if you don't do it perfect the first time that you know that you that you you know you can hold your head up high knowing that you were ready yeah and that yeah. it wasn't your, that you weren't it wasn't your fault for not being prepared mm-hmm. um so yeah i think there's a lot to be said about um even if it's even if it's not air guns even if it's firearms and 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 starting yeah. you know fill a coke bottle with water and put it up at, at 50 meters and and practice shooting something other than an animal mm-hmm. get used to the rifle yeah. there's something to be said That's about the point about learning that skill really you know? ease them sort of into it and, and do that because yeah. there's a lot of the culture that comes with hunting that that kids can bring in later on at life but i think the fundamentals mm. of being able to shoot properly and respect of firearms too i'm sure Absolutely. these air guns are just as dangerous as what oh, yeah. any they other any other firearm can be maybe more because you don't expect them to be able to kill and they can mm-hmm. I, I know lots of I've, it's, sadly i've i know a few stories of people who've been killed oh, really with air guns that were left in the house by parents who who weren't didn't think they were dangerous and the kid shot the other kid and it's like yeah, it can get bad but um so bottom line is anything that can shoot whether it's a little bb gun like you treat it with respect yeah, and definitely like learn um you know point the muzzle in the safe direction never leave it cocked there's all the basics and mm-hmm. rather learn that with something that's slightly less deadly and yeah. drill it into them yeah. so that by the time they get their first fire on they know like you you don't there's certain things you don't do and there's certain things you do yeah yeah you got to have that respect of it of growing Absolutely. up definitely and before we actually hit record yeah now you were telling me about these all the different ones you can shoot different yeah, firearms that you can shoot in different calibers and stuff of of air guns how i mean how big can a guy go up with <laughs> with an air gun well um so obviously everyone the classic is like the little 177 and that and for perspective that's an 8.4 grain pellet at maybe on a cheap bringer like 400 500 feet per second now <laughs> the, the the air guns that i'm using um we we kind of limited to, to 22 caliber in south africa as far as air guns go okay so i'm shooting a, a, a 5.5 millimeter that's so you get 22 rim fire which is 5.6 okay and you get 22 air gun which is 5.5 so yeah. we're just under the legal diameter okay but i'm pushing that close to rim fire muzzle energies mm-hmm. so i'm shooting a heavy slug at high speed Okay. And it's very close to rimfire. Um, so you can basically take whatever you can shoot with a rimfire, you can shoot with an air gun. But you don't, in South Africa, you don't need a license for that. But okay. you can really go up. Um, in the US, I'd say 30 caliber, 25 caliber are probably the most popular. And that's up to like a 45 grain pellet mm-hmm. at 1,000 feet per second, 900 feet per second. But you can really push it up. Anything higher than that, you start you, you start calling it big bore air gun. Okay. And you're kind of moving towards slugs instead of pellets. Yeah. And you can you can really get some heavy slugs like 350, 400 grain slugs. A lot of people shoot That's like heavy. 45, 357, 50 caliber air guns, and it's very popular for guys to actually come to South Africa and hunt big game. Like okay. I know a lot of guys have done buffalo hunts. Um, really? Shot everything. I mean, Springbuck, um, Irland, Impala everything with big boy air guns it's, it's becoming like almost like a bow hunting where it's mm-hmm, a bit mm-hmm. of a challenge or a muzzle loader hunt yeah where it's like a, it's a bit of a challenge it's you have to get close yeah and you have to do a proper I was stalk say your distance is and you have closer. but but if you can get a good heart and lung shot that slug's going straight through and it's expanding nicely and there's a lot of science that goes into that as well That's which is cool. cool and they accurate you can shoot a one inch group at 100 meters with a big boy air gun um, a lot of recoil to manage because it's like a slow push. Uh, okay. It's not like it's. I'd say the recoil can actually be worse than a firearm. Actually, so it's not that there's no recoil. It's just no, a different type of a recoil. I mean, with that, the weight of those slugs, it's like it's those. A lot of those slugs are actually heavier than than a firearm. Okay. It, uh, that, you know, so I mean, you're talking like that 50, 50 caliber. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, and then you get the biggest I've I've actually heard of is a 72 caliber, and that I think it's like. I think it's a between 700 and 1,000 grain b- bullet. Like you don't even find that on, on most firearms. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was gonna say. it's insane, and and I don't know of many people who have them, but I know a few people who have them, and they are a bit scared to shoot with them. Actually, it's like it's oh, really? a lot of pressure, and it's dangerous. But but it's it's very interesting. Would and you get a suppressor or a muzzle brake for you them? You can, but uh, there's only so much you can suppress something okay. like that, and then it's still noisy because. Just the sheer volume of air. Yeah. An air gun operates at like, I'll talk in PSI now for your American audience, but like, let's say 3000 PSI. 
a firearm operates at like 60,000 PSI. So 3,000 to 60,000, what is that, 20 times more? Yeah, it's a big jump. And th the limiting factor is obviously your scuba tank that you're filling your gun from. Okay. But, um, but because you, you're working at such low pressures, you, the volume of gas that you have to put out to get that same muzzle energy yeah. is much higher. And that's why trying to suppress an air gun is actually very difficult. So much harder. Yeah. That's phenomenal. I've been just chatting to you these last couple of days. It's just been phenomenal how, how amazing these things things are. Yeah. Um, and in so terms go on, of go on, uh, go on YouTube or Google and just search PCP air gun, and you will, you'll, your world, your eyes will be open. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm intrigued. That's for sure. I can't, I can't imagine. You know, more guys haven't been, haven't been bringing these things hmm. and hunting with them. Is it? Is it generally quite difficult to sort of bring them into South Africa? I know you're getting different so, regulations from each yeah. country. So there's two challenges with, with traveling with an air gun. The first challenge is that because it's compressed air, you have to, when you check it in, you have to prove that it's, it's that there's no pressure in it. Okay. And that's difficult because it might mean unscrewing the bottle and showing them, I mean, I know, I know guys who just, um, <laughs> who just write a letter like to whoever's inspecting, like, hey, I, I promise you this thing's empty and, and they just hope that it gets there the other side. Um, so that's the one challenge. The other challenge is that in, in many countries, air guns are not regulated. So like okay. in, in the US, you can buy whatever caliber you want. You don't need last for it. You don't need to register nothing. So when you travel with it, you're taking this gun case and you're checking it in. But there's there's you have to then prove that that is not a firearm that requires a license. And okay. that is some that can be quite a challenge. That can be difficult. So I know a lot of guys who've done it successfully. Um, I suggest... If you're in the U.S., contacting a company like uh, Utah Air Guns and asking them about it, because um, they will have known many people who have done it themselves. Who've got, they've gone through the process, and they can advise you on what to do. Yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously, the other challenge is even when you arrive in a place like South Africa, where do you fill the thing with air? Like, <laughs> so it's not easy. But yeah. if you can do it, it's something just very different and unique. So I mean, if somebody's if somebody's interested, somebody that's listening and watching this video that wants to do it, can they obviously reach out to you and, and ask your opinion? Or you've got guys in, in the states that you can recommend yeah. them to? Um, I would say, ch uh, yeah, chat to Utah Air Guns. They're probably the biggest gun, uh, air gun shop in the U.S. They oh, would okay. know. And yeah, there's also a project like the farm that does the Oxwagon Diaries. Mm -hmm. They want to open up uh, to. They want to start catering for air gun shooters. They're going to have a compressor on site, and oh, and cool. they kind of want to cater to to air gunning so there's there's things opening up in south africa slowly but surely mm -hmm. where people are starting to cater to your dassies your monkeys your which actually a dassie hunt is fun because you have to you sit and you wait <laughs> yeah. and you keep in quiet it's actually quite fun yeah and um you know they in in the eastern cape those animals are in hunt in our hunting gazette they're legal to shoot mm -hmm. um there's bag limits for many of them but you can legally hunt them um some people stew. tell you will tell you that a, a dusty stew is one of the most amazing things ever. Okay. So it's something different, yeah. and it's something you can, you know, if you come over from the states and you shoot something like that, you got a story to tell when you get home. It's a it's unique little animal. No one's really heard of it over yeah. there. You know, you might hear about a kudu or something, but Three. hey, I've shot a dusty. Hey, what's that? It's a, <laughs> it's a conversation starter for sure. <laughs> there is, as you said earlier, we're so spoiled for choice in terms of what we've got here in South Africa. Really are. Um, yeah. But now, I mean, we've. We've obviously got a lot of baboons where we are, and, and mm. we can go after them. Actually, the, the cliffs behind us—I don't know if we can see it in the video—but that's where I've, I've shot a lot of baboons here, and I enjoy it. Is that obviously some, you know, some sort of animal that you can go after with your air guns, as more not entry level, but yeah. sort of one up from there without going into those big calibers that you were talking about? Is that something you can talk? Because they're a tough animal, a baboon. They're very tough. So I mean, I think firstly, let's just mention. You gotta have common sense in the sense that you, you need to know the limitations of your weapon. Okay. True. And if you're hunting an animal like a baboon, which is extremely even a monkey, which is extremely um skittish and and, and weary and, and you you're trying to take a rushed shot yeah. with a with a gun that's not gonna do a massive amount of internal damage, you've got to really know that you're capable of putting in the shot um where it matters. So from for monkeys, for example, I only take headshots with monkeys. Okay. With my more powerful air guns, I'm willing to take a body shot, but you've got to be really careful. Yeah. Um, and then from a legal perspective, our hunting proclamation, um, I can only speak about the Eastern Cape because I don't mm -hmm. know many other places, yep. but yep. in the Eastern Cape, certain species have caliber restrictions. So for example, um, dussies, vervet monkeys, ground squirrels, we can shoot them with a five point, uh, 
a caliber under 5.6 millimeters okay, legally. Under 5.6, okay. But and the baboon and many other larger game animals, you can't. Mm -hmm. So in that case, um, if you want to shoot one of those animals with an air gun, you would need to bring over what we determine to be like a big boy air gun or over 5.6 millimeters and higher, and higher, which in South Africa would be considered a firearm. But I know many, many people who bring them from the U.S. and have never had any issues because it's not a license. It doesn't need a firearm license in the U.S. They're able to bring them in. Okay. No, I think you might need a permit, import permit, but yeah. I think it's a pretty You probably still fill process. out the SAPS form anyway just to cover yeah. yourself and, and do that sort of yeah. stuff. I'm and sure. then also, <laughs> this is like a whole different ball game, but you actually get air guns that fire arrows. And, okay. and I, I was the first person, I believe, um, in, in South Africa to shoot... A blessed buck with a, and a uh, with a um, with an arrow gun, an air-powered arrow gun, and uh, I also shot a. Well, I actually I went out with Quinton de Kock, the cricket player. Okay. And yeah. and he shot. I filmed him. He shot a, a bush pig um, with night vision with an air-powered arrow gun. <laughs> really? And it's insane. Yeah, like nice. it was a normal. It was a normal PCP air gun. We just switched out the barrel with an arrow barrel, and he shot a bush pig in the front, <laughs> out the back, straight through. Damn. down within 10 meters that's um so that's on youtube as well that's but, pretty cool but after that our government was like who what is this like do we need to regulate this and i got a, a phone call from a local bow shop like hey listen you've got 10 minutes to send an email with your your um your thoughts of why this should be determined uh, 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 this should be regulated as as a bow okay and not a firearm so i was able to and and as far as i know they now um, that's now determined, accepted as, accepted as yeah. a bow, and you can okay. hunt with an air-powered arrow gun as a bow. Yeah. So it's it's like there's all this new developments in technology, and it's it's so interesting. Definitely. And it's something you know, firearm industry. It's kind of I won't say been the same for so long, but it it kind of reached the peak of technology a while back, and there's all these little changes that are making things slightly better. But with air guns, it's like massive step after massive step, okay. and yeah. And it's, it, as someone who is involved in the technical development, I can tell you that it's very exciting to be part of it and seeing how mm. just 10 years ago an air gun was a totally different thing to what it is today. So Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a prime example of one of those people that still views an air gun as a, as yeah. a pellet gun. Yeah. It's just a one load, one shot pellet gun. You've got to cock the thing and, and that's about it. So I'm fascinated. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Obviously, um, you'd have to look at different factors in terms of, I'm sure, wind. Would wind mm. be quite a quite a factor you have to consider it's with huge. an air gun? It's huge. Um, obviously, a number of reasons. It's not so much about the bullet weight, yeah. but it's about the obviously the velocity. It's okay. moving so much slower. It's dropping a lot more. So you basically have to, if you're shooting anything past like twenty meters, you got to have a rangefinder. Yeah, all right. And you got to understand how your gun, how every your trajectory works, which I think is great because it's teaching people. It's like a scaled down long range shoot. Right. So you have to learn how everything works. You have to learn about wind. You have to learn about drop. You have to learn about um, ranging an animal and figuring out stuff. It's I think it's quite educational. Yeah. Um, but also, um, most of because it's such low velocities, the bullets have to be very short and stumpy for them to properly stabilize. Mm -hmm. So what you find is these short, stumpy bullets with a low bullets to coefficient that that just catch the wind a lot more. So. Well, there's all those things to consider but there's a lot of guys um so like the, the, you know i don't know if you know the nrl like you get these nrl and prs yes. shoots mm -hmm. those the, competitions the nrl you get nrl shoots with firearms and stuff which is super popular then you get nrl 22 which is rim fires which is massive okay. all over the world because it's so much cheaper than spending all your money on <laughs> yeah. like shooting a 6.5 creedmoor or something but now they've just opened that up to air guns and you can compete in their NRL. Oh, that's cool. And you can travel all over the world competing with an air gun, which is awesome. That was going to be one of my questions. I mean, surely you can compete with these things. I mean, yeah, I mean, there was, there was a competition the last week. Surely it's... Is that yeah. a different type of one at the Olympics? It's different. So, so that's 10 meter shooting. So okay. that's very low power indoors. Okay. Um, I used to actually shoot uh, 10 meter at a... At a school just on the road here all right and uh you you can earn in south africa you can earn your provincial colors you can go to nationals and you can compete all over the world but it's there's only so much fun you can have shooting at 10, <laughs> 10 meters, 10 meters and, yeah. and like you buy a 10 meter gun but you can't hunt with it because it's not powerful enough so mm -hmm. there's kind of that disconnect there yeah 
Whereas there's so many other disciplines like um, 100 yard bench rest is very popular now. And just a couple of weeks ago in the US, there was a competition where first place was $20,000. 21, $21,000 for first place. That's not bad. That's, That's I mean, like, going. I'll take that. Buy a car for that. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's, I mean, it's growing quickly and uh, it's, yeah, very exciting. It's good. I'm a fan. Um, I got so many other hobbies and stuff that I want to do it, but I think I might add an air gun to it too. That's yeah. pretty cool. Tell me a little bit about what what a bullet or is it is it called a bullet or a pellet? Or does it, so, does it determine at what size you sort of get? Because what does it actually do in terms of what a normal bullet would do once it hits an animal? Does it expand okay. or, or what? So a normal firearm bullet, um, many of them will, will, will kill through hydrostatic shock, which only happens at really high speeds. Okay. Whereas most low, a uh, very low speed bullet, you kind of uh, like, so a bow, then you're looking at just cutting, cutting through, straight through, yeah. like bl your blood loss, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blood loss. That's yeah. it. The animal goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas hydrostatic shock with a fast shooting, f um, firearm, like a two, four, three is actually in uh, the nervous system shutting down from mm -hmm. that shock. The shock wave sends so many signals to the brain and the brain says, okay, I'm going to shut you down. Yeah. Animal actually goes into a coma, mm -hmm. and then it, it dies of blood loss or organ failure while it's in a coma. From that, yeah. Um, and then obviously, um, hydraulic shock is just uh, a, a bullet. Just that shock wave actually bursts the cells in the organs, and yeah. and that animal will die mm -hmm. through organ organ failure, which yeah. is often you see. Um, you'll take a hot lung shot. An animal doesn't die from hydrostatic shock. It still runs, mm -hmm. but it does. Um, it'll either bleed out or it'll die from hydraulic shock from just organ organ failure. Basically. Yeah, it's just damaged. Yeah, um, and that's what an air gun does essentially. Okay. So you'll never, uh, you'll you very rarely, unless you shoot an animal in the head, get an animal dropping on the spot with an air gun because it just doesn't have that. It just can't cause enough damage to the okay. nervous system. But yeah. But it's basically so you, with a with a pellet you've got this round dome mm -hmm. and that's basically just blunt force trauma okay um and and the the, the different uh, up until just a few years ago you only really shot with pellets yeah and that's right. your typical dome or flat nose and then um, a waist and a skirt and then you call that a, dia a diabolo pellet okay that's what the shape is called but now we've, there's so much drag on a pellet that it just gets taken by the wind. It's, it doesn't carry a lot of energy. So the air gun world is shifting towards slugs, which are more bullet shape. Um, I guess you could call it a bullet. I think we've just kind of started calling them slugs. Yeah. But the, a slug, generally a hunting slug, will have a hollow point. It'll mushroom out. Okay. And it'll just... Just beat its way through. Shock. Yeah. Yeah. And when you... I mean, if you can extract one, do you... Do you tend to look at it as terms of we look at bullets as how mm. it's mushroomed, its weight loss, you know, those types of things? Can you analyze it as such? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. Um, that is a big factor, I think. It just kind of depends what you're shooting because some projectiles you actually don't want them to open up. So, for example, if you're shooting a, if you're shooting a, a bush pig and like, you need to make sure that that, that that slug is hard enough that it can penetrate the skull without ricocheting off or something. You don't okay. want it flattening. You actually want, pe penetration's important because yeah. you've got limited muzzle energy. So penetration's a big factor. Mm -hmm. And if you can make a pin-sized hole through an animal's brain, it's still gonna die. Yeah. So it just kind of depends. There's different, um, many different designs available. And um, I personally like, like a very soft lead and a big hollow point because I'm shooting small game okay. where penetration is not a concern. You actually want to do, Less penetration and it, you want it, an energy dump. Yeah, but it just depends on what you're shooting. That's fascinating. Some, sometimes you don't want. Sometimes you want a very light pellet. Let's say you're shooting at a, a grain silo and, and and you're shooting up at a pigeon and you you don't want that projectile traveling far or or coming down and plonking on someone's head mm -hmm. and then you want to use a very light pellet that's almost okay. like a parachute. Yeah. If it comes down and hits you on your head, you'll think it's a, 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 a hailstone or something. Okay. So That's actually a good point. A lot of things to consider. Yeah. Because I've seen a lot of, especially on your videos, um, a lot of the slow-mos that you do that are, mm. they're really cool, but they're fascinating too. You see, really you see how the, the slug or the pellet goes and it, it tends to almost sway a little bit before it hits the animal. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah, you, you, you watch it through its whole trajectory. Yeah, it's incredible. And, and uh, I think that's what kind of took the, the air gun YouTube scene by storm was the whole idea of filming through the scope in, in yeah. slow motion and 
there's only so many calibers you can do that with or because if you, the moment you get some crazy recoil you can't you're going to you, lose you, it you or, lose yeah. that you lose that clarity of yeah. of footage whereas an air gun there's so little recoil that you can actually capture that and and the bullets taking so long to get there that you can capture that yeah and that as a as a as a, a nerd <laughs> i really enjoy that stuff <laughs> it's brilliant I've, I've enjoyed watching those videos and i think i've watched just about all your videos but you must have some pretty cool stories of going after animals with air guns and all sorts of things like that i yeah i've, I've uh, obviously done pretty much everything there is to do in south africa um but i've also had the the privilege of uh, traveling overseas uh done a fair amount in the u.s done some um squirrel hunts on like um pecan nut plantations okay. and, uh done ground squirrel hunts you know the u.s has so many rodents yeah and i mean that's paradise for an air gunner because you can go out and shoot as many ground squirrels or rock chucks or imagine. whatever as you can and um, but then i'd say my craziest story was um i was invited to south america and went down to patagonia the very bottom of south america to give you an idea um santiago which is the capital of chile is about the same latitude as Cape Town. Wow. And we think we fought we, yeah, we think we're pretty far south. south. Yeah. From Santiago we flew four hours south to get to where I was hunting. So that is I mean, you're like right there by Ant Antarctica yeah. basically. Yeah, it was it cold. Middle of summer, but there was snow on the mountains, freezing every night, your tent was frozen, it was cold. <laughs> and uh, and we went out so we took a ferry to this island and then we drove for eight hours on this island without seeing a single car, just sheep and guanacos which are basically like llamas okay and we went out to the middle of nowhere camped on this lake like on the border of um, chile and argentina and i got we, we were shooting beavers which are invasive there oh right and they were clogging up all the river systems and just a massive problem mm -hmm. so the their um department of agriculture there like strongly encourages you to shoot beavers so we okay. did a beaver hunt in the middle of nowhere that was insane we go, oh another one uh so air guns are quite big in the UK, believe it or not. Okay. Because they've got mm -hmm. lots of, um, so the grey squirrel in the UK is invasive. I suppose they've got a lot of rabbits and small. A lot of rabbits as well. Yeah, makes um, sense. A lot of um, pigeons and stuff. So air gunning there is huge because to get a firearm is quite difficult. Okay. So that's kind of where I would say the home of air gunning really is, is the UK. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was in the UK, also sh got to shoot some squirrels in a forest and we made a, a, a poiki, as we'd call it, but like a stew. Yeah, yeah. And cooked squirrels with potatoes and stuff in the middle of nowhere over oh, a fire. That, that was cool, really man. cool. And then, yeah, did a rabbit hunt at night as well um, for a farmer. So, there's a lot of... Uh, that must have been pretty cool. It's kind of like a universal sport. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't require... It doesn't cost much. Most of the time you can do it for free because it's pest control and yeah. it's fun. And your, your biggest animal that you've... That you've taken with an air gun? Uh, there was a, yeah, there was a, a sick ostrich that was on its way out. No one had a rifle and um, ended up shooting an ostrich in the head, kind of to, to put it down. So I don't, I wouldn't really call that a hunt. That's a tough but, shot, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they told me the ostrich can can dodge a bullet with its head. They're so <laughs> like alert and got good reflexes. So that was interesting. But um, yeah, that's probably uh, and oh, bless buck with the arrow. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah. I had a two inch uh, rage broadhead that went straight through both lungs from about 40 meters. That's so good going. it's almost like shooting with a crossbow. Yeah, that's so, good going. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely think there's more and more people that need to get into this. Mm, um, I absolutely. think, in terms of the, the hunting industry in South Africa, there's a there's a big opportunity. Those guys that maybe they're, they're so hung up on, on air guns have never even considered Africa. Yeah. You exactly. could say that they could sort of come and bring one out and yeah. do it this way. Obviously, there's, there's things to the protocols of um you know airlines and things like that but yeah we well, definitely have the animals for them i'll put it this way um if you if you've come here a few times and you've done a rifle hunt a few times and you've you kind of feel like you've ticked all the boxes there and you want to challenge but you're not really into bow hunting whether it's um like like you're not strong enough to draw a bow you don't even have experience and you're kind of comfortable behind a rifle yeah. you can give air guns a try you kind of similar ranges or, or you know you can probably shoot a bit further with an air gun but um or if you just want to, you know, it's a different challenge to shoot yeah. a dassey or, or a monkey or something. It's a different species. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you've kind of ticked all the planes game boxes and you want something to do something different, that might be a great option. Or, you can get into it. You know, wherever you live as well, whether it's in the US or whatever, there's plenty of yeah. um, air gun options. So, yeah, so keep an open mind and there's always something else to do. 
And your YouTube channel, do you do you do quite a few like video tutorials, um, product reviews, sort of introduce Thank guys you. to it, that type of stuff? Um, yeah, so my channel, I kind of cover everything. I've got quite a few hunting adventures, um, but I also do, I've got a whole series on ballistics, how an air gun works from from A to Z, like everything. You can okay, think cool. of how yeah. everything works. Um, and then just many reviews of different products and tutorials of how to how to get the most out of your air gun and how to understand it. So yeah. I'm quite a technical person. I enjoy the technical <laughs> side, but sometimes you just want to like forget about how how it works and go out and just enjoy it. Yeah. So I kind I of right. yeah. I kind of um, move between technical stuff and just yeah. Oxwagon Diaries is probably it's probably the extreme end of just enjoyment. Let's just go it. out yeah. and get away from cell phone signal and just switch off electricity and just go enjoy it. Yeah. I think that's the way that you entice people into it. They see what you can yeah. do with it, what sort Absolutely. of options it gives to you, and then they can get technical from there on. Mm. Um, and that was Air Guns Hunting SA. Uh, Air Arms Hunting SA. Air Arms. Yeah. Air Arms Hunting yeah. SA, yeah. And have you got Instagrams, Facebook pages? Yeah, so like um, my Facebook page uh, is Air Rifle Hunting and Shooting. I kind of wanted to leave it more generalized and not purely for my own channel. Mm -hmm. So Air Rifle Hunting and Shooting, it's almost like a community you can post stuff there or okay. answer, get people to answer questions and then um, on Instagram it's just Matt Dubber one word okay and um, yeah I think uh, if you're keen to get into air guns I'm obviously not the only channel that covers it there's a lot of other channels I tend to do more the high end um, air guns okay but there's many channels that cover the more entry level stuff where you can watch reviews and stuff but if you kind of want a broad overview of air guns I'd say my channel probably covers most of it okay. and especially if, if you're into like South African hunting, uh, yeah. do a, a ton of that, and also show a lot of the uh, different landscapes. I mean, I'm sure you'll see a video of of a little bit of what we did today, and mm -hmm. yeah. um, just just so beautiful here, like nestled between mountains and the coast, and yeah, like river running through it. It's, <laughs> you don't get better than this. So no, uh, that's one of the reasons why I've always enjoyed your channel. Is there's so much more to it than just hunting. The scenery, the places you've gone to, I think. You guys recently um, released a video of, of the Bavian's Clough, which is pretty cool. Ooh, yeah. um, and I live on like this side of the mountains and I was yes. like, where is that place? And that looks so cool. So the way that you guys do it is really cool. Um, we are going to get some footage here down by the coast. We, yeah. We just busy got our fire going for some for some vorse. We're going to have some hot dog rolls just now. And then uh, yeah, we shot two nice impala this morning for meat, as yeah. I said earlier. And then we're going to grab some chow and go out and get some cool some cool footage hopefully find a baboon or something sounds good floating around on these cliffs behind <laughs> us yeah but um look dude thanks very much for doing this again i really appreciate it I've, pleasure. I've enjoyed hunting with you today and yeah hopefully we can do some more after this so absolutely um be sure to this is obviously on your channel but for those people <laughs> that aren't on his channel be sure to um check matt dab out for anyone that's interested in air guns he's the guy to go to and cool. and for guys on my channel do you want to just give a few brief words on on your podcast yeah, for so guys who want to follow that. Yeah, thanks. My podcast also is people called. People want to come out, yeah. Yeah, my podcast is uh, Round the Fire with Kings of Safaris, hence the fire. Where I'm so excited for the first <laughs> one to actually do it. Um, we all do hunting in Africa. Um, I get a lot of past guests on um, guys that have been to Africa. They share their experiences. I want it to be sort of a, a no grit. You know, if they had any problems with flights, with outfitters, cool experience or whatever, just a first hand experience. So. Round the fire with Kingsview Safaris, and then um, my safari business is called Kingsview Safaris. We're on Instagram. Um, I've got a total of about four followers on YouTube, so <laughs> don't bother going to my YouTube channel. Uh, go to Instagram, Facebook, and then kingsviewsafaris.co.za. Um, anybody that's keen on a hunting trip to South Africa, I'll, I'll be more than happy to to give you some info. So, once again, dude, thanks again. Awesome. This has been uh, absolutely so much fun. Cool. Cool. Done. <laughs>